Okay, the ambiguity of seeking powers, you know. Sorcery costs you. Magic proper involves a discipline and a training so that you can produce manifestations out of your own forces that you developed in yourself through training. Holy magic involves petition and grace. You learn how to work with spiritual beings whose understanding and knowledge of the totality of the reality of what's going on is far greater than ours. We have to humble ourselves before them. Valentin Tomberg says uh, you have to learn to think on your knees. Uh, Rudolf Steiner says uh, you develop the capacity for it to think in us. That is, the, the spiritual being thinks in us. Our thoughts are thought in us because we humble ourselves and we make ourselves available to the work of the higher hierarchies who need us to be part of what goes on in the world. Okay, And in the study of anthroposophy, for example, and of course I've got real anthroposophy on a different part here, if you get into real anthroposophy, you discover how to bring about a metamorphosis in your thinking. How thinking can do something that it couldn't do before. And there's a certain amount of discipline in that and a certain amount of life experience and wisdom that has to be acquired in the doing of that. And in my real anthroposophy, which is done to anthroposophists by and large, trying to sort of help them continue the problem of, of uh, bringing about the revolution in, in human existence that Rudolf Steiner was a part of and understanding the meaning of all that. There's a lot of problems in that particular discipline. Here I'm just talking about people who want to learn wisdom and if you're going to learn wisdom you don't just study Barden but you study Rudolf Steiner. In fact in this book produced by Barden students which is kind of a crappy book in some some senses. In the back, I think it's in the back here. Um, uh, I forget where it is, but they say if you want to know more than what Barden produced. You go to Rudolf Steiner, okay? So it isn't like these things aren't connected with each other. And Rudolf Steiner had a, a pupil named Valentin Tomberg and another one named Owen Barfield and lots of stuff is spread out from all of that. So it's all interconnected. All right. <laughs> In my writings, you will find this idea, and particularly my writings about Barden, I'll end up with coming at this. This is where I want to end today. If you want to live your life in the present, your biography in the present, the two most important kinds of work you can do are A, and it has to do with your inner, inner development, learn to understand the shadow, okay? And I have a book about the shadow, and I also have stuff on real anthroposophy about the shadow. I'm not going to talk about it here, but that's what you need to do. You need to understand that inside us is um, something. Let me tell you the story of the two wolves, which is kind of a Native American way of looking at this, and it's very wise. And um, this young boy is talking to his grandfather or an elderly uncle and he's getting some information and the, the elder says to him, well, you know, there's there's uh, two wolves in us and uh, the one wolf wants to do the good and the one wolf wants to do the bad. And you have to be able to notice that element in you. And the kid says, well, what do I do about this? And the guy says, well, the the whole trick is about which wolf you feed. Okay, So when we give in to the bad, we feed the bad wolf. And that becomes stronger. 
when we struggle to do the good, we feed the good wolf, and that being becomes stronger. And so with respect to the shadow, the reason uh, I've written about the shadow is because we live in a time when it's now important for people to be able to understand this and appreciate it. Now the other thing you can do besides learning to master your own shadow forces is you can learn to use the gift of the word. The ability to speak and write has an enormous power. In a way, it's the power of powers. Because what did Christ do? He spoke, he taught. You know, What did Gandhi do? He spoke and he taught. Now, your life can be speech as well. And you can understand teaching through example. But these are the powers we have. And the more we learn to manifest... Uh, Discipline over the shadow forces, the more our capacity to use the gift of the word to speak and write and act in the right way will manifest. And these are the powers that can be manifested in this age, not 